Welcome to my channel. I'm Zhang Jingxu. Let's look at the problem 26 in chapter 30. Chapter 30 is about inductance, electromagnetic oscillations, and AC circuits. So there we have this circuit, right, with inductor and uh, resistor. And we also have the current I1, I2, I3. At the very initial, ask you part A, the switch is closed. We can see when the switch is closed, there will be a voltage difference between this point and this point, right? Yes. And the voltage will bring the current I1, I2. But look at there, the, this branch is the resistor R3 and the inductor L. And we know for this uh, just a sudden change on the voltages, this inductor will prevent it, right? Will prevent sudden change. So that means the current in the I3 is zero. So this is the first one we know. We can consider this branch is open. We don't consider it. Now you can see when the switch closed, we just have the battery R1 and R2. So this uh, EMF on the battery equal to current times the total resistance R1 plus R2. Then we can get the current. And this current is just equal to I1 and I2, right? So the second one asks you a long time after the switch is closed. So we can see if the switch is closed for a long time, then the, this inductor will decay and becomes to inductance becomes zero. So we can uh, a long time after switch is closed, there is no voltage drop across the inductor. We can just ignore this uh, inductor, think it as a straight wire, right? So now this becomes the uh, R2 and R3 do the series connection, uh, do parallel connection, and then do series connection with R1, right? So we can say from this point, the current I1 equal to I2 plus I3. And also the Y, this uh, battery voltage equals to from this point to this point, that is I1 times R1 plus I2 times R2. This is for this loop, right? This is a Cherhoff loop. And also, because we say R2 and R3 parallel connection, so we have the voltage as M. So I2 times R2 equal to I3 times R3. Now we need to solve this equation for I1, I2, I3, right? So we can see the question A, the first question was the I1, I2, I3. So we come there. We can just uh, convert this equation to write the function for I1 with the variable I2. Similarly, from this one, we can write a function I3 with variable I2. Then we input I1 and I3 inside. We get it look like this one. So in the, this equation, we can see only I2 is unknown, right? And R2, R1, Y, R3 are given. So we solve this equation, we can get the function for I2 there. After we get I2, we input it in this side, we get I1 and I3. Yeah, right. The third one is uh, ask you, after the switch has been closed for a long time, then reopen it. So once we reopen it, so it is closed for a long time and then we reopen it. Reopen it, that means this uh, part is not connected, right? And then you can see R2 and R3 and the inductor become a loop. And then the potential difference just stored in the inductor will flow to the R2, right? So it will flow this way, right? In the opposite direction with I3. So the current in I2 and I3 should be equal but opposite directions. Let me repeat it. So just after the switch is opened, the um, current in these inductors will continue, right? And then the only way he can choose, the current can choose, is R2. Because once the switch is open, this R1 is not connected to the R3. They, they have the shortest loop for R2 and R3. So the current will go this way and back. So the current for R2 and R3 is equal. This is a loop, right? And the current for the I2 and R3 in this uh, picture, we can say in opposite direction. The D, after a long time. Of course, after the long time, we can say the current just uh, in this uh, 
inductor will decays, and finally it will decays to zero. And then we can see I1, I2, I3 becomes zero. Thank you.